Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for being with us for the six hours of Shanghai pre-event press conference for the FIA World Endurance Championship. Uh, as you can see, we have a fine selection of drivers for you this afternoon. Uh, I will start with Pedro Lamy, who is uh, on the far end to cameras left. Good afternoon, Pedro. Welcome back to Shanghai. Pedro from Aston Martin Racing, of course. Uh, some thoughts for you, Pedro, ahead of this weekend's competition. First of all, are you pleased to try? Good afternoon. Yes, uh, it's a nice track. I mean, it's a nice place. Uh, even that uh, track has quite a few years. It's still very demanding and nice track to drive around. I mean, and, um, we're going to see how going to be the weather because uh, it looks like maybe rains on Sunday. Hopefully not, because it makes our life easier. But we will see, wait and see. The car we just started, the car seems to be all right. We will see next practice. It's a long way until the race starts. How much work is there to do then in setting the car up for a, a track that has two such very long straights as we've got here? It's a big compromise, this track, for, for any car, I presume. Yeah, it's a very long straight. It's one of the, the highest speeds uh, in our championship, maybe the second after Le Mans, top speeds, I believe. And um, But on the other side, there's so many corners that we have to, to compensate to have a good car and some fast corners, slow corners, that we need to break late and have some downforce. But at the, same, at the same time, we need to have a, a good speed on the straight. So it's a good challenge for everybody, for the engineers and for ourselves to find the, the right uh, setup. Well, good luck for the weekend to your left, our right, James Collado, AF Corsa. James, uh, welcome to China and the six hours of Shanghai. Congratulations on your result in Fuji, obviously. Uh, well done, good, good run through there. And we get to the business end of the championship now. Um, how much do you think, just one race at a time, how much do you think championship at this stage? Uh, I think uh, as a driver, mentality is you can only take each race as it comes. And uh, whatever the outcome is at the end is, is what it is. But um, I mean, you can see this it's a very close fight between Porsche and uh, Ferrari at the moment in GT. It's nice to see. It's very good for the championship. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, we have an edge at the moment. But Porsche is, has improved a lot this year in general. And um, they're really pushing us hard. So uh, we'll have to see this weekend. Um, we, as ever, have been asking for questions from our audience away from the track and uh, this from rmag1 on Twitter it says uh, how do you feel when you jump from single seaters like GP2 into GTE do you feel more comfortable in a formula car or in in the uh, in the sports car um, uh, I mean it's, it's getting, a, getting to a point where it's a long time ago I remember what it was like now but uh, no um, I'm really happy in GT uh, racing it's very competitive uh, it's very professional, there's, there's top drivers in this championship and I also really like the way this championship's run compared to what I've previously done. So um, I prefer what I'm doing now to, you know, by a long way and uh, I hope um, you know, I can stay within the GT environment for a long time because this is what I feel like I should be doing. I feel really at home with Ferrari and um, yeah, I just hope we can uh, you know, continue our success. I mean, last year we won, uh, I just really hope this year, but especially uh, it's the last year with a 458 for us and um, we, we hope we can get a good result at the end. Just as a supplemental on that, um, driving for Ferrari, um, you're a pro driver, everyone up here is a, a pro driver, but there are certain marks and manufacturers that just do stand out in motor racing. We have pretty much all of them represented in this championship, but wearing the red of Ferrari, does it just give you that s certain frisson? It really, yeah, I mean, it, I never believed it at first, but it really does. Uh, you know, when we go testing out in Italy, there's all the Tafosi, even for the GT, um, they're all around the track taking photos, even in the restaurants, Marinello, it's a, the whole of Ferrari is one big team, uh, Formula 1, GT, everything. So, um, you know, I'm so happy to be a Ferrari driver, um, I really do love where I am and um, let's hope it continues. Thank you, good luck this weekend. Pierre Kaffer is to your left for Team by Collis. Just driving one car this weekend, yeah? Just taking it easy? <laughs> yes, uh, taking it easy in one car is uh, 
is enough for this weekend and as Pedro said the, the weather forecast is quite exciting for, for Sunday so I'm really looking forward to drive uh, my LMP. The, the team has made big strides forward uh, this year and uh, certainly in the second half of the season since Le Mans the performance uh, and the reliability of the car has been much better. Uh, do you feel that it suits this circuit? Can you get a, another result here? Yeah, well, it's uh, it's quite difficult to find the right setup because, uh, as uh, already mentioned, uh, it's a, it's a big challenge about top speed and about downforce. So, um, rebellion is uh, quite strong, but uh, I know that our car is uh, uh, quite good in reliability. So, for us, it would be nice if we have uh, 40 degrees. For rebellion, I think it doesn't. And uh, speed-wise, we need to catch up a bit because I think we um, we a little bit behind, but I know that uh, there will be another step for Bahrain. It's quite difficult to produce, to design, to bring it, to make it, and to fit it on the car. And um, I'm really looking forward then for next year when we have the, the new big update where we're already working on it. Good luck for that. and we. Hope you look for a, a safe and good weekend for you. You mentioned Rebellion. Yeah. Next year, Nico Proft. Hello, Nico. Nice to see you again. Looking forward to this challenge this weekend. These guys have been giving you a bit of competition the last few races. Uh, yeah, it's been nice. You know, they made a big step forward uh, since last year, and um, they're really competitive now. So it's hard work for us. Uh, yeah, I mean, we've been working quite well with the new engine. It's getting more and more reliable. It, uh, it was not easy for us this year, but uh, the last two races have been very encouraging on that side. So let's hope we can keep the good form here. Um, you've been busy when you're not driving with us. Obviously, another driver who's away doing other things. Formula E for you, completely different from what you're, you're doing here? Is it a completely different mindset even? The different type of racing and the different type of racing car? Yes, it's very different, you know, uh, one is on a red track, the other one is in the middle of the streets <laughs> and pretty much in the middle of the streets, so yeah, it's very different, one is sprint race, the other one is endurance, so the cars are super different, so. but it's not too bad to be honest, to jump from one to another, it's really two cha really good championships, so yeah, it's really nice to be doing both of them. Uh, and Rebellion have had a bit of an up, up and down season, uh, hopeful for a, a good race and a reliable race this weekend, presumably? Yeah, I mean, we always knew it was going to be difficult because uh, the new engine came in really late. We had almost no testing before Le Mans. And, uh, yeah, I mean, since Austin, it's not too bad, to be honest, the reliability. Fuji was a really strong race for us, like car 12 run with no problems. So let's hope we can do the same here. Good luck. Be safe. Uh, to your left, our right, we move down the line to a returning Alex Brundle and Pegasus Racing. Uh, first of all, welcome back, Alex, and looking forward to to get back in the seat and, and a new challenge? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's, it's great to be back here, um, driving prototypes is what I, what I love to do, um, well, driving any kind of racing car, but uh, it's great to be back behind the wheel of an LMP2 and uh, in the WEC, which is always a, a good challenge and a very, very high level in the class. So, um, yeah, delighted to be here. Uh, how ready in terms of your physical fitness, you've been away from the sport, for a little while, how ready are you and what have you been doing to get yourself into, into shape for this weekend? Well, after everything was sorted out health-wise, I jumped back in the gym, of course, and uh, I've been pounding around test tracks in the UK, just making absolutely sure. Now, I, I said to the, the team earlier on in, in the weekend that I wouldn't be here if I wasn't absolutely sure I was ready to be here, so uh, I'm 100% confident in that side of things. Um, need to find a little bit of pace from the car at the moment, but uh, I think we'll be there, especially in, in wet conditions, but, but also in the dry at the end of the race. Yeah, Pegasus back in the championship as well, jumping into a LMP2 grid that's hyper competitive at the sharp end and right the way through the field. Clearly, no championship aspirations as as they're coming back in. What are you guys aiming for, and what are the guys looking forward to for the rest of the season, and possibly further than that in the future? I mean, to be honest, I think it's going to be tough. Um, this weekend with uh, not even the current, most current spec of Morgan, we've got the, the older car and uh, on the Michelin tyre which in dry conditions doesn't quite have the peak um, performance of the Dunlop. Uh, our, the, on the positive side we've probably got the longevity in terms of um, in terms of tyre performance and also uh, the wet tyre from, from Michelin is except, exceptional. So I think it depends on what the conditions are, uh, varies our, our 
options in terms of, well, there is our opportunity in terms of results massively. Uh, I've just received the call up for this weekend, so I can't talk too much about the team's aspirations into the future, but uh, one weekend at a time. Okay. Good luck, be safe. Uh, and last but by no means least uh, to our far right, uh, Richard Leeds from Porsche Team Manti. Uh, we've talked already to James, uh, Richard, about this fantastic battle that we have between two massive names in the sport, Ferrari versus Porsche. Um, coming towards the end of the season now, it's uh, it's all getting pretty serious now, isn't it? Um, yes, I mean, we are really close from the points, so it doesn't matter really to look for the championship. Uh, it's basically we have to be in front of them uh, by every race. Uh, it's, it's like zero points difference, and even a qualifying could be important now because we get the one point for the pole. Mm -hmm. and, um, it's what we want, what the spectators want, but uh, of course, uh, yeah, it's difficult to do everything correct and, and beat them because they have shown the last two years that they, they are good in winning championships, so I hope it's time for a new cup. <laughs> a new name on the trophy, perhaps. Do you, you, you see you're not really thinking about the championship, it's just about racing the cars that are uh, around you. Um, the Porsche has been strong in the second half. Uh, of the season. So, are there any particular tactics that you can play between the two cars? Do you talk about it as a team or is it really just go out there and, and drive as fast as you can? I mean, for Porsche it's really important the Manufacturers Championship so they don't care which car. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, that's why it's difficult to make any strategy or, or team orders. Uh, as we saw also in Funchi, uh, our sister car finished second, we finished before. But it's okay, I mean, we are here to fight uh, for Porsche. Uh, it's, you know, it's uh, all paid by them, so they didn't make a decision, and uh, that's it. That's why we race for um, the Manufacturers' Championship. Uh, got a Twitter question from you, uh, and this is about Porsche. It's been a good year for Porsche for the P1 team. They won Le Mans, of course. Uh, they're also looking very strong in the Manufacturers' Championship in P1. Does that put more pressure on the GT side of Porsche? Not really. I mean, the focus is on LMP1, that's for sure. So. Um, it's two separate operations and we, we have our uh, team doing it, the team Mante and uh, the LMP is you know, two separate teams basically so it's not really more, more, more pressure for us, basically it helps because it took pressure away from us <laughs> and uh, also the Le Mans uh, victory helped the LMP1 team to get pressure away so I think it was basically until now a nice year and uh, for, for both 